morning. Welcome back to the Retirement Report. I'm Hank Parrott, your guest. I'm Hank Parrott, your host. My guest is Russ Cook. Uh, Russ Cook with Russ Cook and Associates over in Brentwood, Tennessee. I've known Russ for over 15 years now. We've uh, getting closer to 20, I think. But we've uh, both been in business for over 30 years. All he does is estate planning. As I say, he's a board certified estate planning attorney, uh, one of the few you'll find in the area. Uh, he's, so his specialty, of course, is estate planning. And he's been doing it for a long time. One of the things, and he does great work. I've had many, many clients, that uh, mutual clients that Russ and I have. And and, uh, and I've been on both ends of it, both in setting up the plans with Russ, as well as in administering the plans when uh, when I've had clients that have passed on, and how well this has worked for the families in the plan, the, just as we designed it is the way that uh, that it worked out for them and took care of uh, protecting the family and the assets uh, over the you know ongoing now in doing it though these these rule changes set up some certain uh, dilemmas you know right now we've got kind of a uh, uh, you know which is which is the lesser of evils here and the choices that are available so as we were talking about in the old rules you could take money out and um, out of an IRA so anything if you were um, taking uh, RMDs excuse me if you're leaving money to your children and they were taking RMDs in the past okay prior to 2020 that plan can continue however going forward any new plans you're gonna have this problem so if you're leaving if you've got in your plan documents your estate planning documents that you're you have a lot of uh, retirement accounts IRAs 401ks whatever it might be that you're leaving to your children in the the way the plans were set up before with Russ would be to put a trust wrapper around them. So Russ, this is one of the things, when we think of protection, let's start, I'm gonna back up a step. When we think of protection and we think of uh, our children, um, or you know, before that, when we just own the accounts, we're protected with state and federal law, correct? That's correct. Uh, the IRA 401k, 401k is governed by federal law, and the IRAs are basically state law creatures as far as asset protection. So if you create an IRA or have an IRA or a 401k account, those accounts are pretty much protected from your creditors. Now, if you pass that account to your spouse, the spouse can then roll those assets over into a new IRA that's in their name alone, and you can continue that protective aspect of the account. Now, when that same account goes on down to the kids, however, that changes mm -hmm. because the Supreme Court has ruled about four or five years ago that any asset, retirement account asset that's passing on down to the kids is not going to have the same asset protection that you enjoyed when you owned those accounts initially. So we've lost the asset protection element of those accounts. Right. Now some clients might say, well, let me just pay it out to the kids anyways. Well, not only do you have a problem with losing the creditor protection, but you also lose a bit of control because when you pass an asset down to the children directly, now the child has to make a decision on what to do with that account. Most kids I've seen in inheritance situations just fill out the form, say I want all the money now, and then mm -hmm. get hit with a huge tax bill later. Right. So what we do is we provide in the estate planning documents that when a, a surviving spouse dies, there's a trust for the child. It doesn't go directly to the child, there's a trust for the child that takes their inheritance and we can make the child the trustee and the beneficiary. That puts a protective wrapper around those assets. Not only the IRA 401k accounts that we have paid to that trust, but also any other inherited assets the child is receiving. It's a great, great tool to use from an estate planning perspective. Hmm. And then when the, in this particular situation with the SECURE Act, if we have the IRA that pays into the child's trust, then we're making sure that we want that child to have as much flexibility with that IRA as possible. The original intent was to have the IRA pay out over the child's lifetime and the trust would say whatever the gets taken out of the IRA, the RMD has to go directly to the child. Mm -hmm. Now we're changing those trusts up so that when the RM RMD comes out of the IRA into the trust, the child has an option. They can either take that as income in the same year or they can leave it in the trust. 
Now, the upside is by leaving it in the trust, it gets asset protection over those amounts that are being drawn out. Mm -hmm. The downside is there's a tax bill that has to be paid by the trust instead of the child it could be at higher rates so likely yes yeah but what we're trying to do is give them that flexibility mm -hmm. at least initially right so it, it becomes a trade-off i've either got the asset protection feature i'm able to uh protect or in and the trade-off being i may be paying higher tax uh, likely will be paying higher taxes on those distributions or we distribute to the child comes out of the trust, loses the asset protection, but likely taxed at a lower rate. And this is a choice they can make kind of each year mm -hmm. as to whether they want the trust to retain it or for it to be distributed to the child. Mm -hmm. and, and we're saying child, and, and of course the, the thinking here is understanding that you know many of us may have children that are you know, much older. Uh, so you might, your, your child may be 40, 50 years old, right? Well, in this context, these same rules apply they may be fine to receive the money. They're losing the asset protection feature. Um, is that trade-off again with taxes? The other part, Russ, was when if the trust is retaining it, I mean, one of the things we sometimes use are tax-deferred instruments. Of course, the retirement accounts being tax-deferred allow still for growth beyond what's being distributed uh, to be deferred and, and, it, and not have to pay tax on it. Sometimes we'll use investments like annuities uh, because we might have have um, what we call non-qualified accounts or taxable accounts where they're not in a retirement type account would otherwise not have tax deferral we can and and if it's generating money that we don't want to be distributed and we don't want to have to pay trust tax rates then we can put it into a, a tax deferred annuity as an example as a way then to let it grow not have to worry about taxes and have more control over what that tax bill is going to look like each year Mm -hmm. Yeah, and where I see that working, let's say there's a trust created for a child at the surviving spouse's death, and it has assets that are uh, non-qualified or regular investment assets, and then it has these qualified retirement account assets. If the non-qualified assets are put into a tax-deferred investment where it's just allowed to grow, then whatever income is earned on those investments are not part of the total taxable income that the trust mm -hmm. would have to pay because it's yeah. inside of that annuity or whatever you want whatever you're using as a tax deferred vehicle whatever comes out of the ira then can just go through the trust and to the child if they need that to supplement their income mm -hmm. um, that way you're able to make sure again looking at it from a from a broad view, you're planning it all out so that you have the least amount of income tax being paid by the type of investments you have in that account, that trust account. Yeah, and this, this helps so if we're having to take those RMDs and we want to retain it in the trust. Now, the reason for that, the strategy being that we don't want the child to be uh, uh, required to take more out than may be needed, both for the mm -hmm. asset protection uh, and the allow, allow, allowing it to grow in a, in a tax advantage way, hopefully. But if yes, exactly, if we take other assets then that are not gonna generate any taxable income, that helps minimize the effect of taxes on, on those accounts that have to take that money out. Here's the thing to understand with that, um, when you're, you know, and Russ, I know you know this, is when it comes to uh, these, the IRAs and the money that you're required to take, when someone inherits an IRA, so right now, if it's your, if it's your retirement account and the new rule that also got passed with SECURE Act, uh, raise the uh, required minimum distribution age to age 72. So what that means basically is now required minimum distributions that the IRS requires us to take what used to be age 70 and a half, it's now age 72. So at age 72, you're going to have to start taking money out of your retirement accounts. It's approximately 4% uh, to start, and that's going to increase a little each year. You have to take that money out because it's like you've been able to take this tax deferral for up to this point, but now it's time that the IRS wants you to start paying some tax on that on those uh, retirement accounts at this point. So you you have to start taking those required minimum distributions. Here's the thing, though, with your when you uh, leave a, a retirement account, IRA, whatever it might be, to your and it could be a 401k, thrift savings plan, any of these uh, uh, retirement plans. When you leave it to your children, they don't have the 
luxury of waiting to age 72, they have to start taking those required minimum, minimum distributions the year after the year in which they inherit. Okay, mm -hmm. so that means they don't have a choice, and that means even more important to get a plan around how to protect these other assets with regards to uh, the tax impact. Now, the other we're going to talk about again. We've been talking about asset protection, and as Russ just said, that one of the things there is it gives you the ability within the trust to put language in there that helps protect the child from maybe making a, an ill-advised or or just uh, not knowing the rules. Uh, making a choice that, that creates a, even more taxes being paid than would be necessary, legally necessary. So we're going to get into that a little bit when we return. But first to break, join us here. We'll be right back on the Retirement Report.